most experienced blue water sailors agree that a good, reliable self-steering system is far more than a luxury. It's an essential piece of equipment aboard any offshore sailboat. Over the years, cruising sailors and round-the-world racers have proven that servo pendulum wind vane steering is unquestionably the most efficient and reliable form of self-steering. One of the most grueling tests of sailing equipment is long-distance, single-handed ocean racing. This is where the monitor wind vane has really proven itself a world-class competitor. Boats using the monitor finished first, fourth, and sixth in the BOC round-the-world race. In the 1990-91 race, five of the eight boats in the 50-foot class were equipped with monitor steering. A real advantage for a racing sailor with a wind vane. And, and I, I should preface this, but most racing sailors think that they can steer more efficiently than perhaps a vane can. And that may be true for 15 minutes or 20 minutes or 30 minutes, but it's not true beyond that. The wind vane responds to changes in the apparent wind immediately. Um, so you're always sailing the boat at its, at its maximum, most efficient speed. You're not stalling the sails. You're not wandering all over the place. You're sailing to that apparent wind, and that's an extremely important thing. Uh, someone steering with somebody else trimming the sails is going to be a half a step off of that. The wind changes, they get headed, um, they get lifted. Um, their response isn't going to be as quick as a, as a wind vane. Um, and it really and truly makes most racers better sailors. They can pay attention to sail trim. They can pay attention to rig tension. They don't have to worry about steering because they know exactly where it'll be. And cruising sailors with thousands of ocean miles agree their monitor wind vane is one of the most valuable and most reliable pieces of equipment on their boats. It's a little hard for me to talk about why a cruising sailor should have a, a wind vane, because in my opinion, every sailor ought to have a wind vane. Um, from a safety standpoint, um, most people that are out there cruising are shorthanded cruisers. They have maybe two people on board, sometimes three, maybe four. People get fatigued very easily, particularly if the weather is bad, if it's cold. They're sitting out in the elements and they're steering, and they can't get away from the helm. Um, it just is unnecessary. Uh, a wind vane, an efficient wind vane, the monitor in particular, can steer the boat better, probably better than 95% of people can steer, certainly after a couple of hours, um, and obviously after five or 10 hours in all kinds of conditions. It leaves you free to check everything else about the boat that you ought to be looking at. Uh, besides that, it makes sailing fun. It makes shorthanded sailing fun. One crew isn't trapped behind the wheel. There's no need to be. Somebody's free to trim the sails. You're free to cook. Um, if it's safe, you can take a nap. That's it. Wind vane steering has been around for years in one form or another, but it was the development of the servo pendulum system that made it really efficient and powerful enough to steer a boat in heavy conditions while sensitive enough to work even in the lightest air. The wind vane sensor controls the servo pendulum oar and rotates it when the boat wanders off course. The flow of water hitting the blade, broad face, swings it to the side with great force. The pendulum is connected with lines to the boat's wheel or tiller which brings the boat back on course. It's an amazingly simple system. Using only the power of the wind and water, the monitor is the most powerful and reliable self-steering system available. The monitor is designed for boats from 20 to 60 feet and is equally effective on heavy, full keel boats and fin keel, spade rudder yachts of moderate or light displacement. The monitor was aboard Tanya Abe's Contessa 26 when she became the youngest woman to sail single-handed around the world. Putting wind vane self-steering on a boat is almost as easy as using it. It all starts with some simple measurements. Is do it. The gear has to be aligned on the center line as well as vertically and horizontally. The height is important. The paddle must be immersed in the boat's weight in order to operate properly. Filling out a basic questionnaire and recording the measurements gives the monitor design team the information needed to develop the individual design drawings. And during the past 14 years, 
the staff at Scanmar Marine has kept a record of each of the thousands of installations. Chances are very good that there's a record of almost any kind of boat. Each unit is customized to ensure the strongest possible installation. This custom design means that each boat will be equipped with a system that delivers optimum performance. The monitor engineers have learned a lot from the sailors who depend on the system. Hundreds of thousands of ocean miles have been sailed with the monitor steering in a wide variety of boats. That's been a great test bed. Using the performance feedback from these sailors, the engineers have taken wind vane steering from its unsophisticated beginnings to a truly reliable, well-engineered, finished product. The quality of construction is the most important element in any wind vane steering system, and this is where the monitor is truly unique. No other wind vane uses such expensive and seaworthy construction. The monitor is made from heliarc welded and electro-polished stainless steel. To ensure smooth, maintenance-free operation, the monitor is equipped with a bronze master gear set and Delrin and Teflon bearings. Although the units have sailed around the world without maintenance, you might want to check the Teflon parts after 15,000 miles. The paddle is made of stainless steel outshell and foam core, which is lightweight yet extremely strong. The paddle definitely handles even the worst abuse. Pretty good. Using the design drawings, the stainless steel attachment tubes are prefabricated at the factory, adding the appropriate bends, welds, and supports. By custom fabricating each unit, rather than trying to make a standard design fit, the strongest, most efficient installation is guaranteed. The vane itself is a very durable piece of gear. Uh, on the first trip around the world, Seattle to Seattle, I was basically cruising, um, although 199 days was a pretty fast time. In 27,000 miles, um, I expected some wear and tear on the, on the vane. Uh, the only failure was a designed one in the Southern Ocean, in the Tasman Sea to be specific. It's a very nasty piece of water. Um, I had seas that were opposing the wind with a current that was coming from a third direction. And I remember this vividly. I happened to be in my bunk, wind vane was steering, boat speed was somewhere between 10 and 12 and, and every now and then we'd slow up but usually we were surfing. The seas were doing this little pyramid thing and all of a sudden in my bunk I was airborne, uh, literally, and we came down with such a crash I kind of rehearsed what would happen if I thought the boat was splitting apart and I got into that drill immediately, jumped out of the bunk, turned on the radio so it would warm up so I could make a mayday call then lifted up the floorboards to see how bad the damage was. I thought we'd hit something. It was absolutely dry. Um, and the boat seemed to be going along OK, although the sails were now luffing. So I went topsides to have a look. And the only damage up there, apparently, is we came off the wave, and another wave hit us, took part of the dodger off, slapped the boat sideways. It bent the, the rudder. The, uh, the wind vane rudder. Um, and there's a safety tube designed to bend when the forces get too great, and it bent that tube 90 degrees. Um, I was able at that point to disconnect the uh, vane and take over the steering to figure out what needed to be done. The most difficult part of that repair was remembering where my spare safety tube was. <laughs> Things were a mess down below. And I had two or three safety tubes, never had to use one. The seas at that point were 30, 40, maybe 50 feet and steep, and it was getting dark. Um, I remembered where the safety tube was, got the boat under control, put on my safety harness, went back, lifted up the rudder, took a pin out, took it down below, replaced the safety tube, put the rudder back in the water. The whole procedure took maybe 20 minutes and started steering again. Following the step-by-step -step instructions in the 26-page monitor manual, installation is a simple and easy process. On most boats, the monitor attaches to the hull with four support tubes and universal mounting brackets, which easily conform to even the most complex compound curves. The four-point attachment gives the strength and rigidity. At the same time, it allows easy detachment of the whole unit leaving only the four small brackets on the hull. 
canoe sterns, outboard rudders, or boomkins are no problem, the custom fabrication makes even these installations simple and easy. With the four universal brackets attached to the mounting tubes, the entire unit is held in position and aligned according to the measurements. It can be adjusted, pushed up against the hull so it matches perfectly. We're then going to measure so we can approximate from the drawing the height of the monitor above the waterline. The other thing we're going to do is if it looks right, it's going to be right. We also have a level. We want the pendulum to be straight up and down. And we can use this control bar to adjust the monitor that way. Again, if it looks right, it's probably right. Once the unit is properly oriented on the transom, the holes are drilled and the unit is bolted into place. All right. To test your installation, stand on the unit. It should easily support your weight. In fact, it can be used as an emergency swim ladder if necessary. Running the control lines is a simple matter. Remember, the less friction in the steering system, the better the monitor works. So make sure the lines always have a good fair lead and use roller bearing blocks. With wheel steering, the line should go to one side and around the special drum attached either to the wheel hub or on the shaft forward of the wheel. An adjustment should be provided in the line to deal with contraction and expansion of the rope due to weather changes. Now it's time to take the new crew member for a sail. When you're headed out of the heart...